thank you for letting me know. Where is Stacy? Hey, Stacy usually tells. She's probably back in the kids. So thank you, thank you. So Father, Father God, we thank you. We ask that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, you're the Father of glory, I ask that you would give unto us your spirit of wisdom, your revelation. I ask for the knowledge of you. I ask for the eyes of our understanding to be open, to be enlightened, so that we may know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of your glory, what is our inheritance as your children, and what is the exceeding greatness of your power toward us who believe according to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead, and you seated him at your own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Daddy, I thank you so much for putting all things under Jesus' feet, for giving Jesus to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. We are the fullness of you that filleth all in all. Do you agree? Amen. We have an agreement. You may be seated. We all know who Joyce Myers is, don't we? Yes. You all, you, you heard of the wretched life that she had. Do you think that if she was born again, she could have changed things even as a child? Yes. Yeah, she's already said that. Can we change, can our children change things in our own homes? Yeah, even if the parents are off the wall. Yes. The children can agree. If I could agree, even though I was out of my mom and dad's house, for my parents, and I watch things change where my dad's watching his language. I, I'd say every third word was a cuss word. How many of you ever heard stuff like that in your house? Yeah. I hope to God you don't hear it in your house now, the house that you have. And if you're in your parents' house, you know what you do? You give it to the Lord and you pray in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will go and arrest them and show them in the night season. That's his job. So what we're going to do today, um, there's, there's roots that, that are inside of us that, that have held us, held us captive, you know. Remember the, the Jewish lady, Ava, she went from, from, from being a captive, didn't she? She came from being a captive to being a what? She came from being a victim to be a victor. She became, and that was a lot of years in between there, but she took the word of God and she changed things. We can take the word of God and change everything that's going on inside of our bodies, inside of our home, inside of our community. We can pray for little Israel. We can pray for these other countries. We can pray for Iraq and all of that Sharia law that's going on with women. It, it, it. It gives you a, a bad feeling in your stomach when you think how they're being treated. But how are women being treated in this United States of America? Many of them are being treated the same way, under the thumb. God took us out from under that, didn't he? So now let's look at, and we're going to learn a, bit of, a little bit about anger and being released from anger from Joyce Myers, right from her mouth, because she had a very good reason to be angry, we think. Yeah, and some of you, inside of you, like inside of me, there was things that were angry in me, and, and every once in a while I got to stop and do the prayer ministry over myself. I got to stop and I'm thinking, what's grinding in my gut? Why am I feeling this way? And then I'll just stop and say, Lord, show me. And so the other day it went way back to a scene when I was in the barn doing chores. I was like, man, I forgot all about that, Lord. And I gave it to the Lord, and I was free. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what we're supposed to be do, doing daily, because we have the Holy Spirit in us. And I'll share a little bit about the Holy Spirit after a while. We've got it made with that powerful, powerful gift. So boys, let's play Joyce Myers on anger and the issues that she went through, and we will be more free from it in Jesus' name. Or by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. How do we hold on to trusting God? How can I have faith in God when I don't know how to trust? Well, I've heard your questions on trust, and I want you to know that God cares for you. Everything around us is just falling apart. As you can see, things keep getting worse. I don't know what to do. Well, the good news is that God has given us some very solid answers that we can look to in his word. 
My hope is that my newest book will help you discover a trust that is truly unshakable. Receive your copy of Joyce's new book, Unshakable Trust, today. Call 1-800-727-9673 or go to JoyceMeyer.org. management <laughs> well I know you all look so sweet I can't imagine that any of you have a problem with anger but <clears throat> I sure did for a long time and I think that many times we don't even know what we're angry about or what we think we're angry about is not even really what we're angry about and uh, so for the next two sessions we're going to try to take this thing apart and get to the bottom of what's going on, find out what the roots of the bad fruit is, and let God help us get them out. Amen? And uh, <clears throat> last night I taught on the inner life, and so I was talking about how we can be one thing on the outside and something completely different on the inside. So a lot of people are trying to function out in society, they're trying to function in relationships, uh, even in their relationship with God, and like I said last night, you can dress it up and take it to church and you can look real sweet, but that says nothing about what's going on in you. And so if you're angry inside, even if you don't even really, some people are angry and don't even know that's what's wrong with them. And I think there's a lot of people that have substance abuse problems, all kinds of different problems, and really the root of the problem is that somewhere way down deep inside, they're angry at God because their life hasn't turned out right, they're angry at somebody else who hurt them or disappointed them. Or they may even be angry at themselves for something they did or didn't do. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my, my family tonight and my mom in particular. She ended up with a lifetime of mental illness. And I know it was rooted in anger that she had toward herself and guilt that she felt because she did not do anything about what my father was doing to me. She was afraid of him. She let him do it. Her excuse was fear. But you know what? Even when we make excuses that sound good, if we know we should be doing something and we're not doing it, we're going to end up feeling guilty that we didn't do it at a certain time. How many of you are with me and you understand what I'm saying tonight? So this is going to be like a little free lesson in psychology tonight. Tonight you're going to be on Joyce's couch and we're going to get a little... little free hour of counseling here that would cost you about $125 if you went out somewhere else. So I hope you gave that kind of an offering because that would be cool. All right. <laughs> Anger is one letter away from danger. All you got to do is add a D onto the front of it, which we could say represents the devil. And anger becomes danger. Anger is the condition where the tongue works faster than the mind. Benjamin Franklin said, whatever's begun in anger ends in shame. He also said, anger is never without a reason, but it seldom has a good one. <laughs> a lady once came to Billy Sunday and tried to rationalize her angry outbursts. There's nothing wrong with losing my temper. She said, I blow up and then it's just all over. <laughs> he said, so does a shotgun and look at the damage it leaves behind. <laughs> Which I thought was pretty good. When Abraham Lincoln had to write a letter to someone who had irritated him, he would often write two letters. The first letter was deliberately insulting. <laughs> then having gotten those feelings out of his system, he would tear it up and write a second letter, one that was tactful and discreet and godly. And I thought about that and I thought, you know what, if you read the Psalms, you'll, you'll see that David, he vented his feelings. He was very honest with God about how he felt. If he was angry, if he was hurting, if he was confused, if he felt like God had left him, if he didn't understand what was going on. He didn't hold back his feelings. He expressed those feelings, but to the right person. And I think that many people, if they would really talk things out with God, they would get rid of them and they wouldn't be a problem for them the rest of their life. And so we want to look at a, just a whole lot of different things, and I hope it becomes helpful to you and it's something that you enjoy. Anger statistics. 
One out of five Americans has an anger management problem. <laughs> Enrollment in anger management courses, court ordered or voluntary, is booming. <laughs> Absolutely booming. Road rage has surged over the last few years. <laughs> Nationwide, a demand for anger management counselors is at an all-time high. Tonight, I get to be an anger management counselor. Isn't that good? Actually, the Holy Ghost is our anger management counselor. And you don't have to go, I mean, you can if you want to spend your money. I'm not putting it down. But you, you don't have to go to somebody to tell you how to handle your anger, it's all very clear right here in the book. And the good thing about going to God is he'll give you the help that you need to actually pull it off and do it. Go somewhere else, you might just get instructions, but no help. God wants to help you. So there's, there's not enough anger management counselors to cover all the people who want to get into these classes. Newsweek said these people are coming out in droves asking for help. Now, you know, there's a lot of reason for all this anger, and we're going to discuss it a lot over the weekend. One of, one of the reasons why people are angry today is just all the stress that they're under. How many of you feel like you've got a lot more stress in your life than what you can deal with? If you don't like your life and you don't like your schedule, you made it, and you're the only one that can change it. See, you're not happy about that. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> you see, in order to be free from anything, we have to face truth. And blaming and making excuses never helps us change anything. So let me say to you what God said to me. If you don't like your schedule, you made it. You're the one that can change it. <laughs> See, we think that all these things are forced on us, and then we get mad at all these people that we think are forcing us to do all these things, and really, the truth is, nothing is stopping us from saying no. <laughs> now, just already, I've said enough to change your life if that's what you need. Well, what keeps us from saying no? We don't want people to be mad at us. And you know what? People that you have to let control you to keep their friendship is somebody that you're going to lose and they're going to disappoint you eventually anyway. <laughs> I like this. In discussing anger, Dallas Willard, who's a very godly philosophy and professor, offers a telling definition. He says that anger is a feeling that seizes us in our body. <laughs> and I mean, you can feel it when it gets a hold of you. You know, I always say it starts down here somewhere and you can, you got to get it before it gets to your mouth. <laughs> it's a feeling that seizes us in our body and immediately impels us toward interfering with and possibly even harming those who have thwarted our will and interfered with our life. Now listen to this. Anger, Willard notes, is frequently used to make other people around us change their course of action. In so doing, it controls their will, which only results in anger on their part. So my anger feeds off your anger, and here we go, round and round, and there's never an end to it. Amen. All right. There's nothing better than peace, you know that? Actually, peace equals power in your life. If you want to have power in your life, if you want to have more energy in your life, you can't be angry. And you know, how many of you have had ample opportunities in the last seven days to be angry? <laughs> Me too. Me too. I'll tell you what, Dave has a paper towel thing. First of all, he's just fallen in love with paper towels. He wants to dry the dishes with paper towels. I mean, everything, everything is a paper towel. And, uh, but sometimes he likes to, like, he'll spread them out on the counter and say he's going to use them again in a minute. Well, I don't like, 
No, they're not, they're not dirty, they're just maybe damp. And so, uh, or if he pulls off one too many, he's, you know, he's very thrifty, so he doesn't want to waste it, so he'll spread it out on the counter. Well, I don't like stuff spread out on the counter, so I go along, pick them up, and throw them in the trash can. And so it's kind of coming, he said, you put anything down around here, you're going to lose it in about two seconds, that's for sure. So the other night, he was ready to go up to his office. He's got a little space up there where he watches his sports at night, and I do my thing, and you know, the older you get, the happier you are to give each other space. <laughs> I don't know, you guys are liking that a little too much. You know, when you're first married, you know, you just want to be with each other every second. Well, you more than likely will get over that, but that's not, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So, so anyway, he's getting ready to go up to his office and, and he's got these paper towels laid out on the counter. And I'm like, why do you have those laid out? He said, I've got them there for when I come downstairs. I said, now, wait a minute. <laughs> My counter is neat. So I said, why do you have your paper towel laying out on the counter for when you come downstairs at bedtime? Why can't you take it off the roll then? He said, because I want it there. I said, I don't want it there. He said, I want it there. I said, why do you want it there? He went over to it. He folded it up. He said, that's all right. I'm taking it upstairs with me. He said, I didn't expect to get an inquisition over a paper towel. <laughs> but the point is, is 25 years ago, I would have gotten so mad. Now, how many of you get mad over stupid stuff? Okay, maybe you're not the kind of person that's going to have road rage. Maybe there's somebody watching by TV that might be that kind of person. But I'm going to assume that that's none of you since you're here together for church tonight. <laughs> but you may still be a little guilty of getting angry over what the Bible calls trifling, uninformed, unedifying, stupid controversies over ignorant questions. And if you don't think that's in the Bible, it's 2 Timothy 2.23. <laughs> when I think, and I want you to think serious with me, when I think about how many days and years of my life I wasted being angry, about things that really didn't even matter, trying to control people that I was never going to be able to control, can I tell you that trying to run the universe is hard work? <laughs> I mean, it just will flat wear you out. Anger, the Greek says, the Greek Vines Dictionary says, anger is the strongest of all passions. It is indignation, vengeance, and wrath. Anger begins as a feeling and can, doesn't have to, but can progress to expression in words are actions. And I was not kidding when I said you can feel anger and upset. It starts somewhere down in here in the realm of our, the depths of our soul, and you actually can feel it getting bigger and rising and rising. And I was not joking when I said you need to do something about it before it gets to your mouth. Because once we start to add words to it, then it gets worse and worse and worse, and then we've usually got words coming back at us. Now we're in this real heated exchange, and that's when sometimes people can do things and say things that they really with all their heart wish that later they would not have said and done. Amen? So I said it can progress to expression in words or actions, but I also want to quickly add, it doesn't have to. You know why? Because we don't have to follow every feeling that we have. Amen? All anger does not have the same characteristics. 
One type is characterized by quickly blazing up and subsiding just as quickly. You're in a grocery store, somebody bumps into you with their grocery cart, you're like... <laughs> you get control of yourself, you realize it was an accident. That's over very quick. Another type is a more settled, abiding condition of the mind, frequently with a view to revenge. Now, this is the type that can take root in you or, or me because we think about over and over and over and over and over what somebody has done to us. And you know, the more we think about something, the more out of proportion it can become. Till suddenly this thing that really didn't have to be that big of a deal becomes this big, huge mountain in our life and can become a controlling factor in our life. I'll tell you what I've decided, and it's working pretty well for me. I don't have enough years of my life left to waste one more of them angry. Maybe when you're in your 20s, you feel like you've got a lot of time to waste being mad. But by the time you get to where I'm at, and we won't talk about it tonight, <laughs> by the time you get there, you don't feel like you've got any time left to waste. So I'm going to ask you tonight to deal with this emotion of anger. Let God help you deal with the emotion of anger, not only to get rid of any repressed anger that you have left over from old things that have happened to you, but learning that we live in a society that is violent and angry, and we're in the world and not of it, and we need to be an example to other people not out there acting just like they do. Do not, do not put a Christian bumper sticker on your car. if you are not going to act like a Christian while you're driving. <laughs> Amen? And then there's a type of anger that is provoked to take action. In other words, the angry person verbally or physically acts out the anger. Anger can manifest in yelling, hitting, damaging, throwing things. <laughs> bringing harm to the focus of the anger, criticizing, withdrawing. That was one of my favorite ones. If I was angry, I'm not coming in the room with you. I'd rather go out the front door, walk around the house, and come in the back door to get to the kitchen than to walk through the room where you're at. Amen? If I'm angry with you, don't touch me in the bed. I will sleep on the seam of the mattress rather than touch you. I will not ask you to do anything for me. Well, let me ask you a question. Who are we hurting? He had the cover and I stayed cold all night. He had the TV and I was off in another room pouting, sitting in the bathroom floor crying. <laughs> it's really downright foolish when you get right down to it. And you know, some of this is humorous, but I really want you to take it very seriously tonight because I'm telling you, anger is doing so much damage to people's lives and so much damage to their health. I'm sure if we had the time, which I don't, I could ask Dr. Paul to come up here and tell you what anger does to your health and he could tell you that it's not healthy to be angry. There's no telling how much energy it takes to have one good fit and try to get over it. Do you know what fits are here in Houston? Sometimes anger results in ridiculing or humiliating another person. Teasing in a manner of putting them down. And you know, a lot of times we're actually angry at somebody. We've got some kind of a deep-rooted resentment and so we do what the Bible calls coarse jesting, where we're saying negative, unkind, insulting things, but acting like we're kidding. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was only kidding. <laughs> I was only kidding. 
Well, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. Amen. This type of behavior can also be seen toward oneself. You can be angry with yourself and you can say downgrading things about yourself. We played golf with a man one time and I remember every single time he would make a mistake, hit the ball bad, miss the ball, miss the putt, he would say, stupid, I'm so stupid. That's just stupid. Well, see, he was doing that because he was angry at himself. He was embarrassed because he didn't perform good, and he was angry at himself. I tell people this all over the world, and I'm going to tell you tonight. Do not ever again say a downgrading thing about yourself out of your own mouth. You are created specially with the hand of God. He loves you. He has created you uniquely. You make mistakes like we all do. I make mistakes, you make mistakes, but there's a lot more right with you than there is wrong with you. Amen? You know, my father frequently would hit, slap, or occasionally even come home drunk on a Saturday night and beat my mother up. He was very fond of yelling and screaming and sticking his fist in your face like he was going to hit you. And I hated that. I hated it. And even now, I, I don't do well if somebody is slapping at my face because I still have a reaction to him doing that all the time. And so I really just like, even if somebody's teasing me, I don't want them around my face. And uh, my dad was so mean, but you know what his real problem was? He was mad at himself. He knew that his behavior was wrong. He knew that he was doing a lot of things that was wrong. But instead of taking responsibility for them and getting the help that he needed, he blamed everybody else in the world. There was something wrong with everybody out there. And if you're dealing with somebody in your life that finds fault with everybody in the universe, then in all probability, there's a guilt problem going on on the inside of them about something that they're doing. And instead of facing it, they're displacing that anger onto somebody else. You know, this whole thing, we can see it get started in the book of Genesis when Cain killed Abel. And if, and if matter of fact, I want us to go look at it. It's in Genesis chapter 4. Now, there was an issue here with the offerings that Cain and Abel gave to God. And Abel's offering was acceptable to God, but Cain's was not. And I won't get into a teaching on all that. Cain tried to give something that was the work of his own hands, and so he wasn't really being obedient to God. Verse 5 says, but for Cain and his offering, he had no respect or regard. God said, I had no respect for his offering. So Cain was exceedingly angry <laughs> and indignant, and he looked sad and depressed, which we might also add that a lot of these bad moods that people have is also the result of anger of some kind. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why do you look sad and depressed and dejected? And I love this. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin crouches at your door. Its desire is for you. And I like this too. You, I drew a circle around it, must master it. So don't blame somebody else. If you're not doing what's right, he's saying to him, then you can find forgiveness. Things can be straightened out, but you have to face it. Just don't go around angry because your life is not turning out the way you want it to when you didn't do what you should have done to have gotten the right result. To God, did that touch anybody here? It touched me. It did. It touched me really deep. You know, last night, Pastor Kenny got up out of his chair, and he left his shoes lay there. Yeah, do you believe that? <laughs> I went, and I'm going in the other room, and I kind of tripped over, and I was like, mm, them shoes, and I kicked them aside, and I thought, why didn't you look down, Jan? But don't you think, girls, I really, really had the right to be angry with him. Don't you really? You know, thank you. Thank you. Well, come on, girls. 
Do I leave my stuff lay around? Absolutely. Don't say a word. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. <laughs> and cabinet doors open. Oh, you know, I just want to be able to see things. That's why I let some of the cabinet doors open. I just want to see it. I don't like stuff covered. I want to see it. Okay, but you know, when, when you look at this here all, it, what does peace mean? Peace equals power. Now, we, we remember what it says in, in verse, uh, in, um, when you have ought, before you take communion, what do you do? <clears throat> Excuse me, if you have ought against somebody, you're supposed to go to them. But, you know, if you have ought against them and they don't know you have ought against them, don't go stir up the hornet's nest. Get a real life. Just go before God and ask him to forgive you because they probably don't even know what you're thinking. Come on. I did that for too many years. Uh, like, like she was talking about her father. I never knew what my dad was thinking. He'd come in the house and you'd get a slap and you'd think, what did I do now? And all of a sudden you'd rattle some pans in the kitchen. What is there, a chivalry going on there? But there was a lot of words that I don't want to say that he'd say. And so you were always walking on eggshells. But you know what? My mother was 50% of the fault of that because she was supposed to come up against him, like it says in the Kamash. She was supposed to come up against him. And because we saw that, and look what happened to our family. I look at brothers and sisters, and it's because we saw that. And she, we realize now she should have stood up for us instead of letting him continue to treat us like he did. Because, again... I was the only Christian in my family. And again, when I go back and I look and I see how our home was, it was because I didn't, my mother did not come up against my father, but she continued to take it like a dog. Yes, Walter, yes, Walter. If I treat him good, he'll treat me good. He got worse and worse and worse until after he got sick. But his anger drew him to what? And he died painfully. He had cancer throughout his body because of his anger. I'm not saying that if anger, that, that if you have something going on in your body, it's because of anger. I'm not saying that. But, you know, we can check and we can see because I know when this came on me, I said, Lord, show me. And he said, yes, you do have areas. And so I started going to him one at a time and releasing it to him and saying, Lord, help me to forgive. Help me to forget this. Help me with this. There, you know, did you ever not want to change something and you just know you're right? Did you ever, did you ever, no, you didn't? Nobody? Yeah, anybody. Yeah. And finally, I'm like, God, I don't want this anymore. I don't want this anymore. I was the victim and not the victor, but I become the victor. You know what, when I went to Pennsylvania and took those classes, and that was the best thing that ever happened to me because I had to face who I was and what I allowed. But people can't do one thing to you. You know, like, like she was saying about her dad, but look, at, can anybody, if somebody comes up against you, Aaron, and keeps on, and you get a headache. Can you go and say, so-and-so did that? You can say, Allie did that to me? Well, she wouldn't do it. She's back there. She's back there. <laughs> he says, I know. But can he blame her, even though she was a, a piece of work? No. <laughs> he has a free will. He can receive it, or he doesn't have to. But if you receive it, you'll keep on with the headache. That's all you have to do is say, hey, I give this to you, Lord, Sigur. And he will go and speak to her. We should really change that around, shouldn't we, Al? But isn't that what we do? We always want to blame somebody else for the way we are. But once you come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what is going on in the inside of you? I want to share this with you. So many times, how many times have you said, um, God, if, and I've done this. God, if you'll just do this, if you'll just do this, I'll do this. Yeah. Do you ever? Mm -hmm. And what did he ever say back to you? You know what he said back to me a while ago? I've already done it. I've already taken care of it. 
But God, if you would only heal me, God, if you would only give me the money for that, if you would only um, straighten my family out, if you would only straighten, you know what I'm saying? He said, you've already got it. Who has it? I have it. I put some, down some notes. And then, then how many, also I got to ask you this because it's in my heart. How many of you, because I said this too, you know, if Jesus was only here, those people way back in biblical times, they got to touch the hem of his garment. They got to talk to him. They got to see the miracles in person. Have you ever thought that? I wish, I wish. I finally got it. No, I don't wish. Because the best thing that ever happened to us, like Jesus said, the best thing that can happen to you is if I go away because I'm going to send the comforter. Who is the comforter? Who is the comforter? The Holy Spirit. But you know, it's the daddy God. It's Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So do you have the Holy Spirit that you can touch? Yes. He's inside of you. He's downloaded in you. How do you release him? By praying in the Spirit. How do you release him? How do you release him? You see, you have the authority. It's just like when I pray over you, if you don't receive. Okay, when Pastor Kenny laid hands on me and prayed, you know, being the only one that knew, knew my situation, when he laid hands on me, or in fact, I think we took hands, and he prayed. He couldn't give it. No, no. What I was doing is drawing the Holy Spirit from in him onto me. He didn't have to believe what I believed. The only thing is I had to receive it. If you take, if I'm going to take, and I said this before already, if I'm going to take a, a lamp and I want that thing to light up and I don't plug it in, is it going to light up? It's not going to light up. But once I plug it in, do I have to turn a switch to get it on? Well, we're already plugged in. Now we have to turn the switch on. How do we do that? We do that by acknowledging that we've got the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in us. We've got more than what they had in the Old Testament. We've got the three in one inside of us, so we've got God inside of us. How do we release it? You see, we're destroyed for lack of knowledge because we don't realize what we have. Because too many times we're so busy with the physical world, and we don't stop to look at what this world, the word of God says. But when we do and we say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've got that inside of me, I'm going to release that right now. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed, I am healed. And you get a little cocky, you know what I mean? Then you say, hey, I got a bill. My God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Ah, oh, my children, for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. <gasps> but, do you ever take the time to sit down and think, what is so angry? Who, who are you really angry with? You look at her dad. Why was he so angry and did the things he did? Because of his anger. That's my dad. My dad. It was his anger. And that anger kept on and kept on. I was that way at first because I picked that up from my dad. The things you hate the most you will pick up, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. I never wanted my children to run away from me like we ran away from my parents. We couldn't wait to get out of the house. My children ran to us. Couldn't get them out of the house. You would understand. Now, think on this again. We have got power. Peace equals power. Can anybody make you do something you don't want to? No. They come along with a gun, put it in your back, put up your hands. Yep, you just did it. But what about inside? You're not changing inside, are you? That's why when any disease, any sickness, any poverty, any oppression, anything that comes toward you, what are we to say? What are we to say? Anything that touches my body, my mind, my world, dies instantly, that isn't good for me. It's about time we rise up, isn't it? What, you know, they have the chemtrails going and all that kind of stuff. Do we have to fear that? No! That stuff can be released right over top of your head. And you go, 
That cannot touch my body in the name of Jesus because I've got the blood. Do you have to fear anything? See, that's where we've got to get into the word and see what the word says because God says, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. I gave you a spirit of power. But what is the power? The power is love, the love. So are we, are we can I say it this way? Are we regurgitating love where we go? Are we regurgitating anger where we go? Isn't that, okay, you go out in the road. I used to, I used to, somebody cut in front of me, and said, but if I did it, it was okay. Why? Because that's what my dad did. Just like, like, like uh, Joyce's dad. Nobody was right but him. You've, you've seen people with that, haven't you? You know what? If, if, that, if that flea has jumped over onto you, get the flea off of you because they'll become numbers and they'll agitate you and eventually make you miserable. When I really started facing those facts, and I did the prayer ministry on myself, I was just being set so free. Now I'm going like, I don't care. I don't care. Why? Because I gave that to the Lord. He's got to take it. I'm finished. I'm done. If I don't like something, I'm going to pray. If that doesn't work, I'm going to tell. That's what Jesus did. But when he, what did he do real often? He went away and he prayed. He didn't pray for that particular situation that just hit him. He prayed for things in advance. So he'd be ready in season and out of season. Right? Yeah. He didn't, all of a sudden, the Lord didn't, or God didn't say to him, um, son, this is what's going to happen, you know, in the spirit to him. No. He already was laying out his steps. And the Holy Spirit was leading Jesus right to the cross, and that's where he wanted to get. Where are you being led to? Is the anger issue? I, I realize it holds sickness. It holds poverty. It holds, it's almost, you know, um, uh, <laughs> you know, a stench. You know what a skunk smells like. How many of you want to hug a skunk that you know is going to spray you? <clears throat> Because you know what will happen? You'll hug that skunk. Then you'll put that skunk down. Here, Aaron, give your pastor a hug. Ooh, she stinks. She stinks. She stinks. Judy, hug me. Ooh, she stinks. See, that's what God, Jesus, was talking about, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He said, you stinketh. Because what you're saying, you're not even doing yourself. You know, there is so much... There's so much opportunity for us to know the word of God. Now, now let, me, let me say this. Again, that Ava, the Jewish woman, she was the victim. We're the victim when we do not realize that things are our fault. I've had to go to Pastor Kenny and say, I was wrong. He, sometimes he, what? I don't, you know, I don't think you were wrong. I was wrong. I had to, in my heart, okay, because he didn't even see the mood. He didn't even see that. I'm thinking, why did I even waste my time and humiliate myself? But God had to do that. I had to realize what I was doing, what, that anger that was coming out of me, it wasn't destroying. Well, it was destroying. It was destroying. You know why? Because I was drinking. I couldn't remember. Beer, old fashions, wine, walk out of the place. And how can you drink 14 old fashions? Get a real life. I was steeped in it. Yeah, I know it. I know it. It's bad. But when you start young and you start building those things up, what happens? What happens? Did you ever get into something that you know it's wrong and you just can't get out of it? it did you ever do that? Did you ever get... Look at the world's got a lots of ways. What, what have they got? They, they've... Uh, ooh, there's a lot of stuff out there, isn't there? When you want to be free... You will take accountability like I had to. And I'm still taking accountability on things because still things get me a little revved up, you know. I have to take that accountability. And, but God, show me, help me. No, I don't want it anymore. And here I'm hanging on with, oh, I don't want to give that feeling. I want to be mad. I'm going to hurt that person. I'm going to get even with them. Where does it get you? You become sick inside, you know? Now, we've heard doctors that were on TBN that said when you hold that anger, you'll become ill. 
You'll become frustrated. There, nothing will go right. And then you'll start getting that stink around you of the skunk. But when you think, what do I really want? What do I really want? Well, you know what I really want? I want that peace. I want that peace equals power. I want that peace because that equals power in my life. And when I have that power, there isn't anything that can stop me. Nothing. Do you have to deal with things? Absolutely. But now, he says in here, in Acts, Acts 1, 4, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit and his promises now. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. The, the. Hmm. That dictionary says that the word D, the, T H E, belongs to a particular class, person, or thing. The Word of God, the promise, belongs to each one of us. I'm going to say this. When, when I was in grade school, I did so good. When I was in high school, I messed it all up. I couldn't care less. The way my dad acted, my mom didn't protect us. Who gives a you-know-what? You know what? After I got all done, I really messed me up. But I was angry, but I was going to hurt them. But it hurt me. Because there's so much stuff I missed. Because now when I look at the word of God, that was foolishness. I wasn't, I wasn't hurting anybody else. I wasn't hurting anybody. I was hurting me. We only hurt ourselves when we become angry and we sneak around and think we're going to get even. I remember the first time I went and got my hair done at a beauty shop. And uh, I, was, I, was, I think I was about 16 years old. And, yeah, because I drove. No, my mom picked me up, and I had this little purse. You know, it was, well, I know what it looks like, okay, a little purse flop. But I only had a couple things in there, and I opened it up, and I had a pack of cigarettes in there. I thought I was so smart. And when I got in the car, I thought, oh, God, don't let my mom ask what's in this purse. But then I continued to get hooked, and I couldn't get unhooked. And the booze was going down. I got hooked. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ, I'd still be hooked today. Because I was busy trying to destroy me because of what happened to me when I was younger. Some things I'll never tell people what happened. But when you look at the anger that we carry, but especially this Ava, this Jewish, Jewish woman, look at what they did to the Jews Look at the gas chambers. Look at what she saw. How can she, what is it, 40, 50 years later, forgive the person and meet with them and tell them, I forgive them. She was no longer a victim. She was a victor. We can take and we can change things so easily. How do we do that? He says here in John 16, 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So what do we do? We've got the Holy Spirit in us. How can we be free? Because he's in us. The freedom is inside of us. The Father is inside of us. Jesus is inside of us. And Jesus, is Jesus the Word? Is Jesus the Word? So that whole Bible, that whole Bible is the Word. That's Jesus. That's why you see a vein of blood go through the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelations. I can take that whole Bible and I can apply it to my life. Jesus was the Word. He is the Word. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. That's Jesus. So you've got Jesus in you. 
How do you release your healing? How do you release that anger? How do you release that prosperity? How, you re- how do you release when, when you, we've got employees? Oh, sometimes I just want to, just let me out there. Let me fire him. Let me beat him up. You know, he's twice the size I am, and I just want to go out and swing a little bit. Where does it get me? Ah, but when you pray, when you pray and you give it to the Lord, that's, that's how you release the Holy Spirit. See, it's in you. You've already got your healing. You've already got your prosperity. You've already got your peace. You've already got your children with you, your grandchildren with you. You've already got it. It's inside of you. Why do I know? Because God said, I gave you all the authority. I gave you all the authority. Now, when, when, when Jesus is on there, and, and I wanted to just look at that real quick. And when you look at when they, when they were in the boat, when they were in the boat, Jesus was asleep on the pillow. The disciples. Why did he become upset with them when they come and woke him up and said, you don't care about us? Is that what we do to God today? You don't care about us because you're not taking care of this for me. Isn't that what we do? It's your fault. Now I'm angry with you and I'm never going to go to church again. Well, you're not hurting him. You're hurting yourself, fool. That's looking back at me, fool. I'm not calling you a fool. But think about this. They woke him up and he gave him a tongue lashing. That's all they did was ask for help. But you see, he told them, I, you see, he hadn't went to the cross yet. He had given them the authority. He had given them everything they had need of. Is that true? Yes. They could calm the seas. They could speak over. They could raise people from the dead. They could. They could. Well, we have that same thing. Amen. So he said, okay, boys, I'll do it this time. But you know what? This is getting a little old. You know what you're supposed to be doing. And that's what he says to me. You know what you're supposed to be doing, Pastor Jan. You're not supposed to have this issue in your life. What are you doing? You're being destroyed for lack of knowledge. Aren't? Yep, because you're lazy, Pastor Jan. I don't, don't call me lazy. Lazy means you don't choose to do what you're supposed to do. I'm talking about me. Then, I mean, how many things happen? Oh, Remember with the five loaves, two fishes? What happened there? He said to them, he said to them, they said, it's getting late. Let's send the people home. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. They said, well, we'll have to take money and go and buy, buy, buy. They were trying to get the situation solved in the natural. Did you ever try to do that? We try to do that all the time. But what did he say? He said, what have you got? What have you got, Pastor Jan? What did they have? What did they have? I know what I have, but let's go a little further. He prayed, but who multiplied the bread and the fish? Who did that? Who did that? Jesus did not do that. You have to look into that deeper. Who did that? The disciples took it. They could have said, we don't believe that. But as they took it, it multiplied in their hands. He was saying, when you give, you expect for things to multiply in your hands. He does it. Isn't that, isn't that the truth? But you've got to expect it. You say, I gave my tithe. I gave offerings. I put a demand on it. He says, ask, A-S-K, demand, demand, demand what's already laid out for you in that word of God because it's all inside of you. You put a demand on what's inside of you. And stop the muley mouse. I got it so hard, Pastor Jan. That's what he used to say to me. Oh, Lord. He gets tough with you. He chastises you. He says, knock it off. Oh, Lord. He fed 5,000. That was just the men. He took care of them. But he was teaching them. But you know what? Here he went to the cross. All that he taught them. And they all ran away from him. They forgot too soon. 
But when he raised up out of that grave, and when the Holy Spirit came into them, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, those men were ready to die for Jesus, and they did a lot of them. Oh, I won't die for anybody. Well, you're going to die someday anyway. What I'm saying is, die to yourself right now and take on the word of God and stop being this poor little mealy mouse. Oh, I can't do nothing. Get up. You know what? Let me see. Who's stronger than me? Steve. Oh, Mark. Oh, Matthew. Oh, Steve. Oh, look at the, the guy's got a lot more muscle than I do, but I could take you all down with the word of God. Because if he that is in you is stronger than he that is in the world. And when you get that attitude, there isn't a devil in hell that can stop you. You realize that, don't you? Not a devil in hell that can stop you. Can't do it to you. So when we take our anger issue, because you know what? And, and I looked at that and I said, Lord, that's it. That's with myself when I'm angry. It seems like my blessings are cut off. Why do you cut them off, Lord? You know what he said to me? I didn't do that. You did it. Because you won't give up the anger. Is that true? But it's somebody else's fault, Matthew. It was somebody else's fault. You know what? When I was out at Sears that time and I came out and I backed my car out and that woman hit into me, I should have got out and I should have pounded her up. Wouldn't that look like, Aaron, no. Why did I? I didn't even get angry. Remember I gave you the testimony? What did I do? Get out? Are you okay? Yeah. She was surprised I wasn't angry. What are we used to people getting out and being angry? Did she mean to do it? No. She didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. We were just fine. We stood there. What do we do? And here we are talking. We, we uh, text each other back and forth. What do you think? Do you saw? Did she see the love of Jesus come from a Christian, or did she see anger and hate? What did she see? What did she see? She saw the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in me, because I gave that anger to God. God didn't give me a spirit of anger, of fear, of timidity, but He gave me the power of love to step over that and to have victory in every area of my life. Is God good? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take our offering. We're going to take our offering right now. And we're going to take communion. And you're not going to go to people, but if you have any for unforgiveness, I don't care who it is. I want you to literally give that to Jesus. I want you to give it to the Holy Spirit. And you know what? You're not going to only do it now, but you're going to do it as you leave. You know, people in, in the workplace, I remember this one guy, well, I sure deserve that job, and so-and-so didn't deserve it, trying to convince me. Then why didn't you get it? P -p -p Pastor Jan, why didn't you get it? Well, uh, why didn't you take it by faith? If you're qualified, why didn't you take it? Which the person was. They started taking it by faith, and it was not even a year later, and they got the job. Anything that's bugging you, we're just going to take the word of God and we're going to put it first place. Debbie, would you bring up the worship team? We want to we want to we want to be in order with the word of God. Would that be true? Yes. And with that, we're going to have the victory in the name of Jesus. Let's do it. come to you with an open heart and bring a sacrifice of praise i have seen your power in the holy place and i have known your mighty ways i will remember your mercy and lord your faithfulness lord your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life I'm surrounded in the favor of the Lord, always and forever. I will 
come to you with an open heart and bring a sacrifice of praise. I have seen your power in the holy place, and I have known your mighty ways. I will remember your mercy and Lord your faithfulness. Lord, your goodness and your love will follow me all the days in my life. I'm surrounded in the favor of the Lord, always and forever. Lord, your goodness and your love will follow me all the days in my life. I'm surrounded in the favor of the Lord, always and forever. I will remember your mercy and Lord your faithfulness. Lord your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. I'm surrounded in the favor of the Lord always and forever. Lord your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. I'm surrounded in the favor of the Lord. Sing it like you mean it. Lord, your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. I'm surrounded in the favor of the Lord, always and forever. Lord, your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. I'm surrounded. In the favor of the Lord, always and forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, in Romans 12, 2, it says, we're supposed to renew our minds daily. What does that mean? He is saying, check yourself and see what's holding you back from your blessings. What's holding you back at your workplace, with your family in every area? What is holding you back? He says, renew your mind. Ask me to show you, and I will show you, but then be honest with yourself and give it over to him. Sicknesses have lingered in bodies. Poverty has lingered in the homes. Dis-ease has lingered in this, in this world because of anger. We have the opportunity to give it up and not be the victim to be the victor. Thank you for that, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, what is the name of that one movie? Uh, anyway, they're, they're, it's a Christian one, and it's really good. And, and he's a coach, and things are going wrong. And pretty soon he, he turns around and goes before God, and he asks for help. And, and God starts, because it, it was just going bad. Everything was good. Not enough money, couldn't have a baby, blah, 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 blah. What is it called? Facing the Giants. Facing the giants. Do you remember one part in there that when they went into the house, it really stunk in there? And they said, oh, woman, come in. And she says, you'll get used to it after you're in here for a couple hours. Right? Finally, they found out it was a dead rat. I think it was rat. That it was down in the, in the, in the heater. Can you only imagine? And they went and got that out there. Get it out of there. That's what we can do. We can take that dead skunk, that dead, dead rat that's holding us back, and we can give it to the Lord. Once you face, once you face yourself, like I had to face me, it wasn't anybody that could do it for me, it's me doing it to me. Once you face that we have a responsibility and we can give it to the Lord and he can set us free, or we can protect it and protect it, and continue, the smell in the house will continue to go on and on and on. Thank you, Jesus. He says, in Mark 11, the power of faith. At verse 20, And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. 
And Peter called to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curseth is withered away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. They wanted to know how this happened. He said, Have faith in me and I'll show you. Well, who leads us and guides us? Remember, in the Old Testament, Jesus walked and they were, he was leading and guiding. But you know what? He could only be one place at a time. You realize that? Do you know the Holy Spirit is all over? You've got the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit working. He, he can be doing one thing on the other side in Jerusalem right now and another thing here. The Holy Spirit all over. It doesn't make any difference where you go. The Holy Spirit, because I used to try to figure out, how does he do that? omnipresent. He is everywhere all the time. But we get destroyed for lack of knowledge because we don't want to take accountability. I don't know about you, but I thought that was an excellent DVD. Excellent. It released more in me. The other, uh, This is four times I listened to it. Listen to this. So can we have faith in God? Yes. Because the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is in us? Yes. We can. Does he, is he there all the time waiting for us? Absolutely. Is there a timeline in heaven? No. Is there a timeline here? Yes. But when you step into the spirit, there's no timeline. You can have it now. Then he said, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, the mountain is anything that's coming in your way, you say, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Meaning, I trust in you with all of my heart. I trust whatever's coming up against me. I trust that it is emulsified. But shall believe that these things which he saith shall come to pass. Do you believe what you say will come to pass? Do you? Why are we saying some things that we do? Why are we cursing at other people? Why is it you know, I, I, I don't think that's here, but in my home with my parents, it was hell on earth. And some of you had the same thing. I never wanted that to go on to my children. I never wanted my children to want to get away. I wanted my children to be with me. Was I hard on them? Absolutely. What did you guys used to call me? The warden. Boy, Mom, she just doesn't miss a thing. No. That was my job, and I was not going to be lazy about it. I got all over them. But they're happy. We're happy. Now, he saith to them, he says, he says, he saith, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So we're going to have whatever we say. Say, by the stripes of Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus I was healed. I was healed. Therefore, I am healed. For me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. My God supplies all of my needs. Look down at your offering and your tithe. All of my needs according to his riches and glory. Now you gave what he told you to give, and you get the hundredfold return. Remember, you got, you got the tithe, but you got the offering. Well, we've got it. Therefore, I say unto you, what, those, what, so thing, what, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that you receive it, and, and that you shall have them, have them, whatever. You know? Got it? And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father also is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. See, this is the holy thing. We hold back our blessings, just like the Ava was doing, the Jewish woman. She was holding it back because of anger. She was the victim. But when she released that anger, she became the victor. When we release the anger, what happens? We have the victory. But we're always trying to make somebody do what we want them to do. And that's anger and strife, and it just continues to, to get onto us. So he says, when you, when you forgive, so 
before we take this here, we got to forgive. We got to forgive other people, but we have to forgive ourselves. I, so many times in the prayer, when I do counseling with the prayer session, if you can get the people to admit, not me, but if they'll, if they, because some people you can go just so far and counsel them, and then they, they won't let you into that secret place. No, they won't let Jesus into that secret place, which he already knows. He can't do one thing just like I can't. But when you let him in, he will come in and he'll clean house. He will. So what do we need to forgive? Remember, Jesus' body was broken. Break your bread. His body, so there was a big gulp between us, wasn't there? Between the Old and the New Testament. But what did he do? He took all of our anger, all of our disappointment, all of our past, and we can take it and throw it away. Or we can carry it into our life today, and we can make other people miserable and destroy other people just like we were being destroyed. It's up to us. I chose not to. I chose not to. When I asked Jesus into my heart, how could all that drinking and smoking leave and that foul talk? Because of him. Because of him. I was miserable, you guys. Had three kids. And the thing I hated the most I was doing. But then here comes Jesus. And you start putting that back together. There. You can't even see the crack in there anymore. Because he made the two one. So now you have got the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit inside of you, and you can release it by saying, Lord, I'm going to release this just like you eat food. Can people make you eat food? No, no, no. They can put an IV in your arm if they got a food. But can I eat for you? No. And you take and you start digesting that food, right? Do you know exactly what's all happened with that food? I don't, I don't. We don't have to. We just have to believe that it's going to take care of us. The only thing we have to believe is that God's word is taking care of us. And we release it by what we say. We say, nope, I'm releasing that healing right now inside of me. See it being released. The healing of anger. The healing of your body physically. The healing of your mind, that torment. Let him come in and heal you. No, he's already in there. Let him, remember, healing starts from the inside out. That healing will start from the inside out. It doesn't start from the outside in. It starts from the inside and it goes out. When you say, I've got the healer inside of me. I have got the Holy Spirit in me. I got the daddy in me. I got the blood in me. I just release that throughout my body right now. I, I release it to the tormented mind right now. Father, help me to totally understand. Help me to, help me to really get it. Are you getting it? And don't get all feely touchy. Know that when you say it, it's done. And then you start to praise him like David did. Start to praise him. You can do that at home. You can do that in your car driving along. When you take communion, look at that every time and say, I'm going to release the healer in me. I'm going to release the Holy Spirit in me. I'm going to release Father God in me. And I'm going to speak. Say, by the stripes of Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus I, was I was healed. That's medicine. Yes. Say it. That's medicine. That's medicine. To, my flesh. to my flesh. I just released... Healing, healing in my body, in my, body. <gasps> in, my mind. in my mind, in my world, in my world. on my job. In my job, with my neighbors, with my, neighbors. With my, children. With my children, with my grandchildren. grandchildren. Grand. Woohoo! What happened to the woohoo? <laughs> yeah, you just released it. That's a, and you know what? The more you do it, and all of a sudden you go, oh, this thing is working. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Gee, I spoke to that headache that Aaron had before. I spoke to that. He, he finally said, no, it wasn't Allie's fault. It was my fault. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd have to help you. <laughs> the bobble. You got it so good. I 
know. You got it good. You better praise God for that woman. Amen. I've been raising her up. Oh! <laughs> you... <laughs> I can't say that? No. <laughs> He's a good man. She chose him and he chose her. Got it? So now when you realize, when you realize that you did it and you start admitting that, like you'll probably admit that the alley when you get home now without the children around. <laughs> when we... <laughs> When we admit things, when we admit I was wrong, God says, I, I can do it. I can do it now. I can do it. I can bless him because he's been chasing after us because he wants to bless us. He's been running, trying to chase us down. Did you ever? Oh, one time I got to tell you this here. I'm out in the pasture with my horse, my lady, and I had lunged her. You know what lunging is? You know what that means? You hook him up to this wrong, long rope. And then you slowly let the rope out and you have your, your long whip so you can snap it and then they start running around you. Okay, so when, when she ran around me, I'd stand in the middle of about where Ben was and she'd cover how many feet out? 10, 20 feet out as long as that rope was. Okay, and then I'd bring her into me, you know, real slow. But this one time, I took it off and I was going to let her run. And I thought, oh, i got to do something. So I'm running and all of a sudden this horse's head is, whoa, my lady! She wanted to run with me. See, God is running after us. He's, he wants to overtake you. I mean, her head is right there. That was a quarter horse, baby. She wouldn't step on me, but she felt real close. He's inside of you running you down. He loves you so much. He says, I just want to bless you in every area of your life if you'll just trust me and take what's inside because I've got medicine inside and it's a great big, 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 big tablet, so to speak. It's medication and you'll start to release it as you praise and worship me just like David did. Do you realize that? Psalms 89, that was in the reading today. Psalms 89, read it. Psalms 89, what David did to praise the Lord. You praise the Lord like in Sunday morning you come in here and you start praising. God is going to take care of so much stuff for you. He's going to be, oh, he'll take care of stuff for you. You'll say, what happened to that? He was chasing you down and he overtook your problems. You think that's right? Absolutely. So now we're one. Me and you, God, and the Holy Spirit, you're in me. You're in me. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are in me. I receive all of those promises of God in Jesus' name. Let's eat. You're remembering. You're remembering that you have the healer inside of you. You have that huge medicine inside of you just to release. Whatever you need to release. You have it, but speak what you have. Speak it. Say, I have medicine, medicine, medicine. inside of me. Inside of me. I, have peace I have peace inside of me. Inside of me. I'm equal, I'm equal. <gasps> to, God's son. to God's son. Jesus. Jesus. He, said he said it. Not me. Not me. It's true. In Jesus' name. Now, as we drink this, we have a covenant, and that meant we drink each other's blood. He drank mine, my sins and sicknesses. Now, I drink, and I remember your covenant that we are equal, Jesus, and that, God, you have us seated on the throne, and the Holy Spirit is my comforter, my counselor, I receive it in Jesus' name. Let's drink. He is good. God is good. God is really good. Say this. Say, I win battles. I do not even have to fight. God fights them for me. I give him my problem. 
and he takes over. over. Woohoo! Woo In Jesus' name. Do you agree? Now, I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you, and you are blessed at everything you put your hand to. And Father God, we pray right now in agreement for our president, President Donald Trump, for the blood of Jesus covers over him. He is protected. God, that is your man. You put him in office. You groomed his mother way back on that island when she was in on that. What was that called again? What was it? Revival? Say yes. Yes. She was there. She sowed that into her son. And now her son was being groomed for such a time as right now. What are your children being groomed for right now? What are you being groomed for? Take it by faith. Take it by faith. Train them up in the ways they should go. Train yourself up in the ways you should go in this word. Got it? Got it? So, Father, we thank you for our presence. We thank you that the blood is over him. And nothing by any means can hurt him. And, Father God, that he will continue to put people around him that stand with you and get it done. Father God, if Jeff Sessions is wrong, then take him out. He's not taking the cases to the courts to have them tried from past presidents and past people in government. And it needs to change. And Father God, I also stand with you that the NFL will stop. Thank you. People's voices are being raised and they're saying, don't you touch my flag. Don't you touch my national anthem. Don't you touch my men and women who served and died for you. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father. Do you agree? Amen. We have an agreement. God bless you. You have a wonderful day. In Jesus